Hey everyone, this is Jonas from Island Works, getting ready for the next step in my adventure, and that is fixing something that uh, that is so completely ugly in all industry cars, and that is the harness. Building the harness. Last time we looked at the routing. Uh, a very very long time ago, I cut the harness out of the car, thinking that I will come up with something much nicer myself. And looking at how an original. 964 harness looks. I mean, it's it's just complete utter disaster. Ugly, heavy, and I don't know. So I'm thinking I should design and build the most overspec, sexy looking harness that I could ever come up with. And this means concentric twist, Tefcel cables, circular connectors, and of course Raycham and whatever, whatever <coughs> the other cool names and products I will use in it. It's gonna look a lot better than this. Let's have a go at it. And this whole process starts, of course, with the engineering of it. Uh, I was really hell-bent on doing all of this in Excel with, with figuring out exactly what goes from one connector to the other connector, where I splice the cables, where I do all of this, and I, I sort of hit a brick wall with this. Uh, luckily, one of my good friends, Arnaud, living in France, working for E3, contacted me and told me, you know what, I'll let you use one of the softwares we use for this, which is E3 Formboard. Uh, and this is a software that it's, it's really made for, it's a CAD tool made for designing electronics, wire harnesses, schematics, and all of this stuff. And, and, and this has been a huge help for me. I'm going to show you how, how this works and, and why this helps. Uh, the reason why the engineering of building this kind of harness that I want to do is so important is that when you do one of these concentric twist harnesses, you, you, you sort of have to design the whole thing first to determine how you're going to build it as opposed to a, a more maybe traditional harness where you just start building from one connector to the other connector and you see how it ends up being. This is very different. In, in this case, you really need to know exactly where every signal goes, exactly where every splice is. And once you know that, then you can lay it out and, and say where the branches is and all that. So I'm going to show you how this works. It's really cool. And here we go. This is E3 and it looks like there's a lot of things going on here. And that's true because there is a lot of things going on here. Uh, this is supposed to be a signal view of the entire car from the top, right? Uh, so for example, if we zoom into the front here, we'll see left headlight, right headlight, left front indicator, right front indicator. We will see the ABS and uh, yeah, the, the, the Motec dash is here, right? The Motec dash is there, the Motec ECU here, the M150. Here's the PDM, here's the center dash and so on. So, so this is to give you an overview of the whole car with everything in it. Uh, as you can see in the top of it here, there's really a lot of lines drawn out and this is because I focused on this side here and, and really drawn line by line on how every single wire conductor is going to go. So for example, I can see here that I have a component here on the right uh, it says clutch switch here, and it says digital 2 ECU here on the top. You can't see that, but I can see that. And we see that there's a line here going, and we can see that this line goes all the way from that clutch switch to the ECU to a connector called digital 2 ECU. Right? And, and that's how it works. You, you will connect things by pulling a line, and the tool, because it knows that these two are paired together, it will help you with that. Uh, what I've also done in mine here is that I have a component here, uh, and I have some, some gray components here. Those I've built as sub-components. So this is the, the center dash console where I have my CAN bus panel, I have my kill switch, I have the ABS strength. Uh, if you go into this one, you can see that, yeah, here is the CAN bus panel. Uh, if I zoom in here, I see that this is the kill switch. I see that this is the ABS switch. 
So you can see all these components and, and you can see that there's a dashed line here and this is because the, the tool wants to help me. It wants to tell me that, you know what, this, this cable or this connection is not actually made up. Uh, and what you do once you have this, this done up is you do something called a form board. And this is a form board. So here I can see my MoTeC connectors. This is the one MoTeC connector that this harness has. If I go below, I see the other one. And what I can actually see, it gives me a table for this connector. And it tells me that out of this connector, I have used these pins. I've used number one to, uh, this is half bridge nine, half bridge 10. I've used these. I've used uh, universal digital eight. I've used this one, this one, this one, this one. These are the only pins I've used on this connector, right? So I can see this here and I can see which cable is running in uh, from this one and I can see where it's going. And I can see that, for example, in this wire bundle just here, I can see that it's this many cables. So I can see the cable number, I can see how many it is, how different they are in thickness. And this gives me a general idea. And this one will tell me that the, the main branch here will be 11 millimeters thick, right? So that's the thickest cable branch in my entire car, 11 millimeters. So this, this is gonna be really neat, really compressed, really tidy. And then I went to the office uh, and we have a lot of really cool stuff in the office. One thing that we do have is a little machine that uh, prints heat shrink with labels on it. So look at this. Let's see if you can see this. Look at this. So here I have a label for every little cable. So that means that what I can do now is I pull a cable out and it says here that it's supposed to be a blue one, right? Uh, so I'll pull a little bit of blue cable out. I put this label on or I heat shrink it on. Then I'll pull it out to the length that it says on the label. Uh, and once I have it there, I cut it and I put another little label like this on the other side. Uh, and here we are many hours later down in my auxiliary man cave where I have started cutting cables, marking cables and just about ready to start assembling the harness. Uh, I have something really good in, in this area here in my house, which is a very, very long bench. And, and that's really good because you, when you stretch the cables out, you do need a lot of space. Uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit the tools and the methodology that I'm trying to apply here. I don't know if this is the best or not. This is really the first time I ever do this. I have watched plenty of YouTube though, and I did attend the uh, High Performance Academy, uh, the course they have on motorsport wiring, which is really good. If, if you're gonna do this, take that course, it's, it's worthwhile. Uh, let me show you the tools and, and how I went about this. Okay, so this is how I went about it. Uh, I have a, a vice for future use. Another vise that I will use as I start assembling the, uh, the harness. Uh, I've uh, clamped a ruler so I can see how long things are here. Uh, it's up to three meters long. Uh, I've prepared all of my crimping tools. Uh, I prepared the connectors and these, these really fancy, super expensive uh, heat shrink boots that you need for, for getting the thing to, to look really cool. Uh, some splices, uh, then I have all the, uh, the uh, Tefcel wiring here of different gauges, different colors. I'm going to use AWG22 for almost everything uh, and I'm going to use this white one for most of it. Uh, I printed a little rack there so, so I can have these, these on the wall there and then a little consolidator here. So what I do so I take a wire here, I'll pull it out, I'll pull it all the way to length, and then I'll take one of these little labels that I printed in heat shrink, and I put it on. So, so I'll go up to the length that it says here, 420 millimeters, then I'll add 15% for the concentric twist, uh, and then a little bit of margin. I'm, I'm putting quite a lot of margin because I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Then I have, of course, the design up here, so I know what I'm doing. And then I have the cable list down here. So uh, yeah, ready to go. 
Okay, so next piece is to really start assembling this. Now that I've been cutting cables for a, a very long time here, uh, the idea with this concentric twist harness is that you want to get it really round so that it gives really flexible and, and very cool looking. That's important. Um, and um, that comes down to what is going to be the core of the harness. Because if the core of the harness is not round, then the layers you put on top, they're not going to fix that problem, right? Because it's, it's uneven in the bottom. So the way that I have laid out my harness is that from the very back of the car to the bulkhead, I have four twisted pair cables. So that means four pairs of twisted pair. Two of them are for the Ethernet, that is the program, the ECU. And then I have two separate CAN bus networks because, uh, yeah, they're not compatible with each other in my car. Uh, so uh, that means I'm going to have four of these twisted pairs. And a twisted pair cable is this, right? It's, it's just a cable that is twisted. And you do this because it, it improves uh, signal cohesion uh, when you have a serial interface like a CAN bus is that, that transfers a lot of data. Uh, so, so this is a very good method. You have this in network cables, for example. Uh, if you take your network at home, the, the, the ones that run your internet, to make it even better, you have shielded twisted pair that looks like this one. So this is the same thing but it has a shield, so a, a metal, metal jacket outside of it. Uh, so I don't need shielded twisted pair in this one because it doesn't have any big interference sources around it, but I have a lot of this cable. So I'm gonna try four of these. I'm gonna try twisting them together and see if this becomes reasonably round. Let's, let's give it a try. I don't really know what I'm doing here, but I'm going to try this. I'm going to try putting these four cables just in a vise. And then I'm going to see if I can get something reasonably round looking when I do this. And see if I can get this to, to actually kind of behave. So, so they're twisted in one direction. So if I, if I do this, I'm kind of twisting it together with the twist and it actually turns out reasonably round. So twisty, twisty, Let's see what we get here. It doesn't naturally want to stick in this direction, which makes me a little bit worried because if it doesn't naturally stick like this, then how is it going to do that afterwards? Uh, so so this, this feels pretty good. So this would be the core of the cable. Uh, let's put a few strands outside of this of the other wire and we, we see how that works. Okay, so with those in there, so I have five of them now and I'm just going around it like this. And uh, okay, I think this might actually work. Uh, so that was five. It looks like I'm going to need quite a lot more than five. So I'm going to shop up a few more. This idea with the cable tie here was pretty good. So I'm going to see if I can strip this down using a cable tie. Uh, it will consume a lot of these if I do it in this manner. And we're going to make a little bit of a flower power harness here. Uh, not sure if that gives me extra points, but it looks really fancy. And that's not bad. I got that together. And this is my harness. Uh, and that concludes the test. Uh, so this ended up with being the, uh, the, the four twisted pairs in the middle. With shielded, uh, shielded twisted pairs. Uh, and then I have 18 conductors on top of it. Uh, this will then go with heat shrink on top of it. And you know what, Let, let's put heat shrink on top of this and test it and see how, how that will work. And of course, when it comes to heat shrink, it's, it's not standard either. It's something called Raychem DR25. Uh, so this is a, a heat shrink that is very, very flexible. Uh, so I'm going to put that on top of it. Uh, as you can see, my, my little 
novice harness here. It's, it's trying to escape in some areas. Shrinking this one down. Uh, the, the thing with this kind of heat, heat shrink is that it stays this flexible for the continuation and look at it. It's super cool, isn't it? I love it. <laughs> and now that I've become an expert on making these kind of harnesses and my confidence is about here, uh, it's time to start the real harness where uh, these skills will finally come to use. Uh, so let's get at it. And with this newfound confidence, I, I started building the, the core of the real harness. So no longer test wheels, everything is off, time to get the real thing done. Uh, the strategy is the same as it was in the little test piece, and that is create a core first, uh, build that core up for whatever it, it might be, and, and once that is done, then, then start lacing that with the, the outer layers. I'm trying to keep this entire harness to just be core and one layer on top uh, and, and that's because this there, there's not a lot of cables in this car so, so that should really be enough. Uh, so I've, I've tinkered around a little bit to do that. In the test piece that I made this ended up being 26 conductors and in my thickest piece I'm gonna have 30 30, 31 conductors. So I have a little trick that I'm gonna see if it works to, to get that into just a simple layer. Uh, the, the reason why I th think that is important is if you go from, from a core plus one layer to another layer, to get that to look round, you need to put a lot of filler wire in there and it's a lot of unnecessary work and unnecessary things in there. So let me show you what I've done so far. I built the core. And you can see it's here. It goes all the way. It goes all the way up until here. This piece here, this is actually where the ECU is going to be. Uh, so there's going to be two connectors here. They look like this. Right? There's going to be two approximately like this. There's going to be another small little connector here as well, just to connect to, to the other two ECU connectors. Uh, I've... Uh, put the core in here and as you can see I've done it a little bit different now. I have the core and then I have four earth wires that I put in the divots in between these, uh, these twisted pair cables. If that works I've successfully created a single layer, core plus single layer harness which takes uh, what is it 30, 31 uh, conductors and that's good. Uh, I've gone a little bit ahead here. This is, this is a branch off that this harness has. This goes to the, the center console, the one in between the, the seats. Uh, and this one has some splices and stuff here that I've made. So. The next go around invites for a little bit more color variation. I'm going to try using some zip ties now to try to support my work a little bit better. Uh, so I put a zip tie like that just to keep it stable there as I'm trying to apply these cables. And then as soon as I feel like uh, it's getting unstable, uh, I put another one in there. Um, with the first layer I used tape to do all of this and it's because that's that was kind of the, the final layer there anyway. Oh, this is crazy. This is crazy. How is this going to stick together? And the thing is as soon as you are done with it then it's not an issue to put the tape on. At least I don't think so because then you can just uh, uh, you know, tape it up until it sits there and then the heat shrink is going to come on top of that anyway to, to hold it all down. But until you get to that point, that's the tricky piece. The color scheme is getting more interesting by the, the minute. And I'm sure that anyone can appreciate how extremely satisfying it is to put the, the third or not the third, but put the last uh, piece to close up the harness 
how extremely satisfying that is. So as I'm doing this, I'm massaging it a little bit so that everything falls in place and it covers perfectly. Uh, I was uh, initially planning to put the, the so-called filler wire, so just a dead, dead wire in here, because uh, that's what I thought I would have to do. Uh, but it looks like it just, it looks like it evened out very, very nicely. So as I'm, as I'm working my way over, I'm just clipping away the, the cable ties, uh, trying to straighten out the, the cables as you spin them around the harness. They have a tendency of, of course, twisting, and as they twist, they, they form a little sub-bundle by themselves, and then it becomes really difficult to do anything with it. So, wow, look at that. And then kept on tape, temperature resistant, good tape that I'll leave in there for the future. And it goes on like this for a while and in the end you get something like this. So this one is more or less ready for the first layer of heat shrink. I wanted to point out one thing, uh, when you get to a position like this, where there's wires coming out. This is for the, for the accelerator pedal and the clutch, uh, as well as the kill switch comes out here, uh, the one that is outside of the car. Uh, so, so this kind of parasites a number of strands or, or conductors away from it. So what I did was I filled in with this purple. So this is, this is uh, just filler in that case, right? So it's the same after as it was before. And that's essentially just dead wire, right? So let's bring this over to the car and uh, see how it fits. Okay, so the goal with this, with the harness now in the car, mm. is to have a look and see if this is reasonable. I want to see that this joint is in the right place. Right. Uh, earth is going to connect over here. So I have that in a nice spot. This one is long enough. This one is gonna go and connect in this manner to this connector over there. Uh, and this one will connect to the bottom two of the connectors here. So the bottom two of the connectors are for communication with the rest of the car. The two top ones, this is the engine management. So those two will go up and, and back to, to the engine. Right. And what I've done now is that I put a cable tie. So I have a cable tie here, which means that I know that I'm going to put the heat shrink from here up until here. Uh, because that, that strap is there. Then from there it's going to branch off and I'm going to manage this, this portion there. You can see I've done the same thing up here. There's a strap there because this one is actually going to go to one connector here and it's going to pass uh, actually under this one to, uh, to the battery, which uh, taking the advice from my audience is going to sit over there. And following over towards the front of the car, it looks like this. So it's going to follow the original routing and I'm going to use these, uh, these mounting points to strap the harness down. And it's going to go up front there. You see some, some loose cables coming out of the harness there. That's for the accelerator and the clutch. Uh, and now I'm routing this harness behind the pedal box so that it doesn't get damaged. And then it's gonna come up there and it's gonna to attach to a circular connector that, that forms the, the end of this sub harness. So, so with those cable ties in order, let, let's uh, cut the, uh, the heat shrink, get it on and, and make it look tidy. Okay, so let's try the, the first one. I'm using Raychem half inch DR25. Uh, this one should shrink down to six and a half millimeters. And when I measure my, my harness, I am at nine. So uh, a little bit of margin there. Uh, it's good if it has a little bit of size because I have this broom of marked up cables that needs to go through it.
And there we go. Uh, I can see some things, uh, some unevenness with it. And I guess that has to do with me being a beginner. Or it has to do with the fact that everything in this harness is AVG22 except a few cables. They're AVG20 because those are the power cables. Uh, you can't see it with your eye when you look at the, the spiral, the, the concentric spiral there. But I think that's what I can see through. And you know what? I don't care a bit about that. Let's continue on with the other ones. Not a critical piece is the booting. And that is how you create a transition between this, your harness, uh, the connector, and uh, yeah, whatever comes in between. Uh, so typical booting is, is when you have it at the end of a, of a connector like this. And uh, it doesn't feel like this big thing here will actually shrink down so that it fits onto this, but actually it does. They, they shrink a lot of these. Uh, the typical place where you think about booting is around connectors, but you also have it around uh, T connections, T connections or Y connections, and there you use a piece look, looking like this. It looks really crazy that this is going to turn into a T, so I've never done this myself. Uh, I'm going to try it out. Luckily we have an unsuspected candidate sitting here. Uh, so this is supposedly the T connection where we have the ECU on one side, and then we have the other sling that goes all the way up to the front of the car. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue. There's a special kind of potting compound it's called. I think it's an epoxy. I'm going to put that on this edge here, on these edges here, and then I'm going to try to shrink this one down. So I just transferred the potting compound into a syringe I had here. Uh, this is uh, supposedly some kind of uh, epoxy. I don't know exactly. And I also don't know how much I'm supposed to have. So I'm going to try to pull a continuous line here, knowing that this guy is going to shrink down quite a lot. I wonder if I can do this once it has shrunk down a little bit. So as they say, here goes nothing. Uh, I'm going to try to get it to shrink down on the big piece first. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? It went from looking like this to this. Uh, and uh, I think it actually worked out pretty, pretty good as well. Uh, I have my earth cable coming out here. Nice. This goes to the center console. ECU here. This methodology as far as I know, is what they use all the way up to, to F1. Uh, of course, with better skills than what I got with this. But the methodology with twisting and, and using these kind of components, it's, it's really the, the creme de la creme in that sense. O on the other hand, I think this is pretty fun. So, so let me have my fun with this, even if it's overkill for, for the, the purpose of this. And I'm pretty psyched with what I got here. Uh, I will test this in the car as well to, to see that it's good. Pew, does this take a lot of time? Not only designing this, that took me months actually, uh, but then building it, it takes so much time. So I'm gonna have to, to call it a quit now. I'm gonna continue with the connectors and the end pieces and all the things and then flip the switch another time. But look at this. This is the original harness. What a heinous monster of a design compared to this, right? Look at this. It's so nimble, so nimble, so compact, so flexible. Look at this. I I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with it. And I really look forward to getting to the next step with this, which is putting the uh, uh, connectors on, getting the, the bulkhead place in there, and then 
flipping the switch. That will be cool. Uh, like or comment if you saw something that I should do in a different way. Don't hesitate to let me know because I've never done this before. Uh, however, I will do it again because it's a lot of fun. And what will also be fun is the next episode where I will see you again. Thank you very much. Thank you.